Thank you. Good evening. My God, a sports stadium full of queers. How fucking brilliant. Okay. Um, this is the first time actually I've been on American stage since 1991. So, uh, so I hope you'll forgive me if I um, give a brief uh, rundown of, well, for any non-George Michael fans out there, and God knows there are a few of you, I hope you'll allow me to uh, just tell you what I've been doing for a while. Um, 1991 was actually the, the same year that I had my first relationship with a man. I was 27 years old. I know what the guys are thinking, you're thinking, fuck, fancy going 27 years without a decent shag. But believe me, I've been making up for lost time. Anyway, his name was Anselmo Falepa, and he was a, a beautiful, warm-hearted, funny human being, and I loved him very, very much. Unfortunately, in 1993, he died of an AIDS-related uh, brain hemorrhage. And I found myself in the same position as so many people out here tonight. Uh, and uh, it took a while to get over that. In the meantime, the uh, British press, and therefore the international press, had a field day. They, um, they reported my partner's death and, of course, my sexuality in their normal, charming way. And uh, although actually in America nobody really bothered, actually by that time journalists in this country weren't really taking much notice of me. So a lot of people I guess here didn't know about that. But believe me, in the rest of the world they did. Um, anyway, I thought the best way to respond to uh, the tabloids and the international uh, rags was to, to write and sing an album for Anselmo about loving him and about losing him. And I did that. It took me a couple of years because it was kind of a recovery, but... Um, I released it in 1996, it was called Older, and it became... Um, thank you. It became, internationally, outside of America, it became my fastest selling and biggest selling album. Um, I released two singles from it. One was called Jesus to a Child, the other was called Fast Love. And uh, even though um, they were actually both records that topped the charts in Europe for a couple of months at a time, funnily enough, no one here played them. So most Americans didn't get to hear that album. So skip forward a couple of years, 1998, and uh, I find myself performing to what I thought was a gay audience of one in, uh, in a Beverly Hills restroom. It sounds so much better than toilet, doesn't it, restroom? And uh, unfortunately, unlike this beautiful sight I have before me, he was only pretending to be gay which got me into quite a lot of trouble. In fact, I'm still on probation. I'll be on probation for about another six weeks. Um, but anyway, I wrote a song about that particular incident, which was all about cruising, in case uh, you hadn't guessed. And I'd love to have played that for you here tonight. But again, even though it was a massive, actually it was the biggest radio record I'd had since the days of Wham! But somehow, America decided not to touch it. So, I mean, you can draw your own conclusions from all this, and I'm sorry for boring you with it all, but I think uh, the reason I had to do it was because a lot of the press and media in this country, and actually, unfortunately, even the gay press in this country, some of them, seem to think that I have no career anymore and that I'm here tonight to exploit 
the last remaining George Michael fans there are. Which actually is complete bullshit, because I'm here to say thank you. And to tell you that I know that even though I've not been on the radio for the last nine years in the States, there are so many people in this stadium tonight that have stuck by me, and I really love them for that. I thank you with all my heart.